anyone who spends a lot of time, you know, in their garden or farming or whatever, or out in nature, can see the, the cycles, that we're in a cycle too. And so we're in, I don't think we're, it's not the autumn of our lives. It's more <laughs> closer to the, coming to the winter, but that's okay. <laughs> kind of mid to late fall <laughs> is where we are. Part of my artistic journey is that I love to read. And from reading, I dreamed about becoming a writer. I was born into this family of artists. I was encouraged to follow my passions in, in art and nature and have been drawing for the last uh, almost 70 years. I describe myself as a visual artist, creating artwork that you have to see to experience many times, though, to feel. I love to incorporate aspects of nature in my writing. I have a garden. I spend a lot of time there. And so the writing process, to me, uh, mirrors the, the process of the earth, the germination, and the caring for. We met. I'm not going to say the year. <laughs> I kind of remember it vaguely. <laughs> we met at one of the first meetings of an organization of African-American journalists. It was a group of artists like myself. I thought the revolution was going to happen almost in the next week after we met. But <laughs> I never thought it was. No, she didn't, but I, I did. And we became friends. So we have been working in collaboration now for over 30 years in creating these pieces that have text in them that Sweeney composes the text for. Working with Takumba Aiken, we decided to create these pieces that would be embedded in the sidewalk on Nicollet Mall that would tell these stories of these folks who came before. In a way, it was our way of acknowledging the ancestors. Dakumba and I created the forms, and Soyini created the text. And we followed kind of the same path when we were commissioned to create the piece at the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden. You know, all these shadows that we created allow folks to be able to stand in the shadows of these, of our ancestors. We also collaborated on a poem on the Dale Street, Dale Street stop that's almost an ode to this neighborhood. It's really the public part of public art that's really intriguing to me. It's public and people can read it for free and hopefully if they read it, then it, it resonates in some level with them. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> now, See, and you know, no, that, <laughs> no, that, that has nothing to do with aging. No, you know, my no. mother, I, I, was, I was complaining one time to my mother, I said, Mom, I'm starting to lose my memory. She said, oh, you've been like that since you were a kid. You can't remember anything. <laughs> Seitu says, his two harshest critics. <laughs> he says, my mother and you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, you know, there's no question about how deep my mother's love was for me. And I have no question on how deep my wife's love is for me but they were two of the hardest women in my life. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't tell you, like, the critiques and criticism that I got that shaped me. My mother died just a couple years ago at 90 years old. We were so fortunate and blessed here in Minnesota in this land of disparities that my mother and father built up some wealth to pass on to us. And so now it is our responsibility to do that same thing. You know, last year, an 
I had uh, a health hiccup. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And I had to slow down. That was this big lesson to really focus on this next season. I'm not going to accelerate the pace of what I'm doing, but I am more laser focused on it. That you should leave your community more beautiful than you found it. The Black Gate will be this institution based right here in Frogtown that will have a studio space and will have two residences on top, two apartments, that will be dedicated to artists. This will be the site of the Black Gate. We have been recipients of artist residencies. Whoever owned those lands, they made really intentional decisions to leave that land there for the future. And we just thought, okay, we have this piece of earth, and what can we do to make a, a broader and deeper and more lasting impression? We want to have something for the future. It will have a, a small space that will contain our library and our archive. So photos, contracts, uh, communications back and forth uh, that will help folks coming after us to understand a career, to understand our path as artists. We're establishing with other African-American artists in particular and other artists that are archiving their work, that are wanting to have a say in their legacy. All of that is sacred. What we want to leave behind is the same thing that our ancestors left for us. Black Gate is this legacy, but we're not gonna be working on this for all of our lives. You know, I still want to make art. I still would like to spend more time in nature. We're just now getting into birding. I, I love fishing uh, and we love to travel. There are all these things still that we want to do and to see and I'm check out. Yeah. So I'm just curious about what's going to happen this evening even. <laughs> yeah. The curiosity. Yeah, right. You know, That's true. That kind of curiosity. That's true. Always so kind of looking at, you, you know, balance and balance it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>